Hey, and welcome back to the Will That's Good podcast. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I'm so excited for this podcast. We are about to name drop. This is something that I feel like everyone's been waiting for for a while. I know. And actually, we've act- we played it like super low key this time because last pregnancy with Honey, I would like tease what her name's going to be, you know, in uh, my story. You did tease it, yeah. I tease it a lot. I gave hints all this stuff, which created this like crazy, um, I guess, like hunt for people to figure out what her name was. And it was crazy. I mean, there were so many TikToks that were going viral about like what her name could be based off clues that I gave, based off like looks that we gave each other. It was why actually not, really why, funny. Why didn't we do that this time? Because I don't have Instagram right now. <laughs> That's true, but I could do it. Well, you could have done it, but it's too late. Now we're doing the podcast. But uh, actually, we're we're filming this before it goes out, so technically there is still time. And actually, one reason I didn't want to do that again is because I was kind of annoyed because someone did find out the name because they were hunting so hardcore for it and then put it on TikTok, and then that's how her name got released. And I was sad that we didn't get to share her name first because... Because her name had so much meaning, and it was just like, you know, it was more than just... I mean, honey is amazing. It stands for itself. But I wanted to, like, express the meaning, and I wanted to wait till she was born. So this time I was like, I'm not going to say anything. We're going to play it cool. But, of course, so many people have asked, what is baby number two's name? And uh, we are two months out from delivery. And so we thought, you know what? This is a good time to name drop. But before we name drop, we have to tell you a bit of the backstory. Listen, I think we should wait to like the very end. Yeah, you gotta wait a I little I thought you were about longer. to drop it. I was gonna say, then people are just gonna just stop listening. No, no, no. You gotta listen to the end because this whole podcast is gonna be fun and you will not believe, I can't even believe all that God has shown us like mm-hmm. through this name, um, which is really cool because when you look at the Bible, like names mean so much and they are so significant and there's so many messages where you'll be studying a person's life and then it's like you find out the meaning of their name and it makes the whole story even that much more intentional because you start to realize like literally who they were called to be like by name has so much to do with what God led them into. Now I'm not saying that's for everybody. If you have a terrible name, you know, or your name doesn't mean something significant or special, that doesn't mean that God's not so intentional with your story. But there is something powerful behind being intentional about what you name your child and what what you're speaking over them. That's like with Honey, one of the things that we wanted to speak over her, that she would be sweet and strong, just like Honey. Like Honey is a sweet element. It's like a dessert, but it also has the power to heal like they use that as medicine back in the olden days and still today if you look up home remedies for your throat hurting what is it going to say drink something with honey tea with honey um so honey is so powerful it's so strong but it's also so sweet so when we speak her name over her we're like you're sweet and you're strong and we pray that over her and so we wanted something that special for the next baby um but that was hard to think of another name because it's like following up honey was a little bit intimidating because mm-hmm. Honey was just so unique and sweet and all the things. Honey James is so her and who she is. And so I knew I wanted like the Lord to give us a name. So it happened very casually. Um, it was like May of last year. I actually went back and looked and it was um, like May 22nd or something. And we were on a plane And I don't even know why. We weren't pregnant yet. We weren't even trying to get pregnant yet. And I was just like, God, you know, Honey's name is so sweet. And I just, she's so, like, that is just so who she is. I just feel like you gave us the perfect name for her. And I was like, you know, I want our other kids to have that significant of a name, that we put that much intention behind what the name was going to be. And we prayed about it. We felt like this is the name that you know, you have for our child because, you know, it talks about in the scripture, like God knit, God knit us together in our mother's womb. So like God knew us before he formed us. So, you know, he already knows our child. So, so what name do you have for her? And so I started praying on a plane one day and I was like looking out of the clouds and I just remember like so specifically, it just like the name just dropped in my spirit. And it was a uh, first name and a middle name. I looked at Christian and I was like, what do you think about the same? I was probably watching Avengers or a movie or something. For the 900th time. Mm-hmm. Just a, a side note, Christian literally watches the Avengers every single plane ride. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't know how you do that. But 
um, yeah, he was not really paying attention. But I was like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> and so, can I tell them now what this No, was? no, you can't. Because I, I literally just had this cool thought. So, you did not, you didn't have not teased on social media, right? Mm-hmm. What if we teased throughout the podcast? Like, her, her name starts with the, the letter H. Okay, it does start with the letter H. It starts H. with the letter H, and it ends with the letter N. N. Okay, so let's just let's just kind of just have some fun. <laughs> Christian's wanting to drag. It I want to drag it out. Yeah, it starts with the H and it ends with an N. N. So can you guess what it is? Drop it down in the comments below. We'll give you ten seconds. I'm gonna have to say it because I can't keep going with the story unless I say it. Yeah, that's true. There's nothing else to say unless I say the name. Okay, but just give like two more hints before before you drop it. Okay, it starts with an H and it ends with an N. And actually, whenever we were naming Honey Honey, whenever I said that Honey Soup started with the H, a lot of people guessed this name for Honey, which is where I got introduced about to the that. name. Yes, and a lot of people thought we were naming Honey this. I was like, no, and her middle name that. starts with the letter B. B and ends with an E. And it is significant to us because of somebody. Related to uh, close kin. Close kin. So ponder that for just a second. If you guess the first and last name before I say this, you get a prize of knowing that you did it because we don't know what else we can do. And you probably actually already will guess it because those were two pretty good hints. Those were two good hints. Those were two good hints. So now I'm going to say the name that draws my spirit. Whenever I was literally on this plane, I'm saying to God, you know, Oh, I hope that our next kid has a name that's that significant, that that's that it's so perfect for them and who they are. And um, and I didn't even say boy or girl, I was just kind of praying. And I felt like the Lord dropped in my spirit the name Haven Bell, which was so beautiful because Haven, which means safe place or a refuge, and then Bell means beautiful. I thought it was just such a beautiful name because it means like, a beautiful, safe place. Mm-hmm. Haven Bell. And um, I asked Christian if he liked it. And he said, I really do like that. And not as a double name. We'd call her or name her Haven, call her Haven. But the middle name being Bell is significant because I have a sister named Bella. She is my girl. And this is Honey's first sister. And so it's kind of like a nod to my sister Bella being Bell, And also just meaning beautiful, um, this beautiful, safe place. We just loved it. So we kind of fell in love with the name immediately. And then fast forward to, um, when did we find out we were pregnant? September? September. In September, we found out we were pregnant. We were so excited. And, you know, we were going to have a boy or a girl. And I guess you always thought we were going to have a girl. I did, yeah. I kind of thought we were going to have a boy, which is funny because you're wearing blue and I'm wearing pink today. Yeah, but bluish grish. I was like... I don't know. I, I was actually just surprised that we even had a girl first anyways because you come from a family of – you have a brother and then your My dad, dad has brothers. brothers. Your mom has two brothers. And then John Luke was the first in our family. And um, Rebecca and Mary-Kate both had boys. And so Honey surprised me just being the first girl. I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, this is so fun. And so I really thought, you know, the next one's going to be a boy. So, yeah, you sure. know, but something in me, I guess, kind of knew because I was not surprised whenever we did our little gender reveal party and it busted out pink. Yeah. And um, immediately we both were like, Haven, yes. But we didn't tell people for a little while because we were still kind of like thinking about it. So some of y'all know Christian and I are building a new house right now, which has been so much fun, and we are in the process of picking out. We actually just stopped picking out all the tile and all of the wood and the brick and all the different things, and now we're kind of heading on to more of the fun stuff, like the artwork and the furniture. And one thing I'm so excited about is just my new bed and fresh bedding. Who doesn't love sleeping on clean sheets and comfy sheets? It's such a great feeling and just makes you feel like you're in a nice hotel room, which is why my new house will definitely be stopped with miracle made sheets they are legitimately my favorite sheets i am obsessed with them they're self-cooling so they're designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long miracle made sheets are made using silver infused fabrics originally designed by nasa so you know this is pretty legit they are also self-cleaning which means less pore clogging bacteria and breakouts plus no one likes the idea of sleeping on a bed full of bacteria okay yuck disgusting so self-cleaning sheets have made it so much easier 
for us, less laundry to do since Miracle Made sheets stay fresh three times longer than any of their sheets. Um, and I know all of you would be so happy to do less laundry. I love Miracle Made sheets because they're super comfy, they're super soft. Like I said, they're self cleaning. Um, and I didn't realize how much it really mattered that I liked my sheets until I had great ones. I used to think I don't really care, and now that I have those, I, I do care. It seems like sheets this good should cost an arm and a leg, but Miracle Made sheets are super reasonably priced, especially compared to other luxury brands out there. So you can go to trymiracle.com slash woe to try it today. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Save over 40% and be sure to use our promo code woe at checkout to save even more and get three free towels. And Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. So there's nothing to lose here, but I promise you're going to love it. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash woe and use the code woe to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash woe to treat yourself today. Well, then there came a day where everything got... So the gender reveal was in November. Yeah. Everything yeah. got completely locked in. This was probably in December. Um, I guess it was December. And on Instagram, there was this trend going around. And it was like post a picture of the first day that you met, the first day you went on a date, the day you got engaged, and the day you got married. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those like collage things. Collage things. Yeah. And um, so I posted my picture. didn't think anything of it. I just like posted the only other picture of me and Christian took. Which, sidebar, the funny thing is too, when you were doing this, I was actually at the movies. <laughs> so both significant name, you know. Wait, what? What's the when you posted the, the collage, uh -huh. I was at the movie. And then when the Lord put it in your spirit on the plane, I was also watching a movie. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm saying, like, that's – I don't know what's – it's something about it. Maybe – like, let's just – hey, I like it. Way to, way to just look for God in all things. So I was like um, – I posted a picture, didn't think anything about it, and someone, one of my friends who knew we were naming our haven was like, wait. And I was like, oh, my gosh, no way. So this is crazy. I, like, call Christian. I know he's at the movie. I cannot wait for him to get home. I'm freaking out because – so, back up to when we named Honey, Honey. Well, one of the significant things about naming our Honey was on our first date that we um, went on, Christian came to Nashville, we were hanging out, and we were walking past this pottery place, and I was like, let's go do pottery, and it was so spontaneous and random. So, we go to pottery, and Christian paints a little purple uh, mug with a brown cross on it, and then I painted a blue mug, and all I wrote on the mug was honey, like in big yellow letters. Mm -hmm. And the reason I wrote honey was because we had been reading Proverbs together, and we had just read the verse... Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. And I told Christian through text, we've been all flirty, and I'm like, you are the boy with the honey words. Like This is our way of flirting. You are so sweet. I wasn't really flirty, but I was just <laughs> like, you have honey words. Like You're so sweet. Like Your words are so sweet, and they're so healing from things that I walked through in the past. And so that day, like I put a little honey pot emoji beside his name on my phone. So we were like on our first date. And so before like, pottery, we went to lunch at a place called Tupelo Honey. Yeah, that was not so, planned at all. That planned. was so random so anyways i drew honey on this mug and then never thought about it again didn't think about naming a kid honey didn't even think of that as a name at all until we were trying to think of like all the this name for our daughter and then we thought about my great grandma and what can we do that's a nod to her and she calls everyone in the family honey it's kind of like a thing i was like oh that would be sweet and so anyways whenever we decided to name honey honey we were like, man, I wish we still had that mug. That would be crazy if we had that mug. Mm -hmm. Well, three days before the gender reveal party, my dad comes walking out drinking coffee from the honey mug. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I don't know where it came we from are going to have a girl and we're going to name her honey. So the first picture me and Christian took on our, well, like one of the only pictures we took the first day on our date was a picture of us with our mugs. So let me go back and show y'all. This is which crazy. Which is so funny because we would have had to have asked the We did ask lady the lady, which is there, so weird which, for us, honestly. We were just so in love. We were. We didn't care. But it was our first day, so we weren't really in love, but we were we were in like. We were infatuated by each other. Yes. Okay, I'm going to find this picture, y'all. This is so crazy. Okay, so me and Christian asked this lady to take this picture of us, which is just so funny that we did this. So... 
I'm holding the mug that says honey. So we've always been like, that's so cool. We have that picture and it's just such like a cool thing that God did. Okay, so when I go to post this picture on like the first day you met, first date that you had, the first whatever, I post the very next picture. Literally, if I slide to the right, it's the next picture me and Christian took on this day of our first date and the only other picture me and Christian took this whole day of our first date together. And we're standing on a street with right in the back of us in big letters on a banner. It says Haven, y'all. You can't make this stuff up. No, I was freaking out. I never, and, and by the way, when we saw this, when we discovered this, we had already chosen the name Haven. I'm pregnant with a girl. We had chosen a Haven. God gave me the name Haven back in May. Yeah, this is like a month after the Here we are party. in December. December. And Honey and Haven, you know how like you make like mini me, like I have a list on my phone called mini me and I always like put baby names in there. Honey and Haven were both not on our baby name list never ever. On our list, we no. never talked about Honey or Haven. Honey came like so from God, honestly, it was like, just like dropped in our spirit. Like, oh, honey's such a sweet name. And then Haven, it was like, I'm on a plane. I'm like, God, what should we name our next kid? And the Lord said, Haven Bell. And I was like, I love that. It's so sweet, a beautiful, safe place. Then I find out I'm pregnant, find out I'm having a girl. We lock in the name Haven. And then two months later, discovered that the only two pictures that we took on our first date, we have in the picture, honey and Haven. What? I mean, that every time I tell that story, I'm like, that is the craziest thing ever. Like, talk about God, like, truly knowing you before he forms you. Like, he truly knit you together in your mother's womb. Like, and, like, it's just so cool as a mom that I got to almost, like, partner with God on naming our child what, like, her name was meant to be. And I just love that back on our very first date, before I knew Christian was the one, before he knew I was the one, before we knew anything about our story, God knew that we would have two daughters one day and that their names would be Honey and Haven. And one day, four years later, we would discover that the whole time as we're, you know, going along and trying to do the best we can do to follow the will of God, that he had this epic plan of giving us two girls with these two sweet names with such significant meaning. I mean, I'm shook. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. crazy. It is crazy. And we had uh, uh, disclaimer, maybe? Is that the right word? Disclaimer. Uh, those are actually our only two photos. So people have asked, like, what's the next? Was there another photo with another oh, yeah. name? And uh, sadly, that that is it. So, uh, those were so if you're uh, thinking right now, like, what else could there be? Uh, uh, it had to be somewhere else because... That is it. And well, those are the only two pictures we took. And like, and it's not even that it's like subtle in the picture. It's literally the mug says honey and a banner behind us says Haven. And the weird thing about us taking that picture on the street that day is we weren't even shopping at that store. We were literally no. at Imago Day all day, my, yeah. my friend Sarah's store. And then we went to walk down for me, for Christian to take a picture of me and Bella. No, it was you, Bella, mom. Rebecca, and your mom. And I took a photo of y'all underneath this like There was like sign. a light. Like sign, a sign like it was like a like cute painted little... on the wall took y'all's picture there for some reason we did not take a picture there yeah for some reason we, we kept like, walking let's go take a picture somewhere else but it wasn't even like we saw the sign and we just t- it was like just on the street no, we just Bella took a was picture. like let me get a picture of y'all because she's been a good sister to me and knew i'd want a picture on our like first date and you know you don't want really yeah. want to ask and so Bella took this picture and we'd never thought about the fact that it said Haven behind it. We didn't even know it said Haven behind us because if you're not looking for that, you don't really notice it. Y'all know I love talking about Jesus. I love sharing the Bible. I love sharing scripture with people because I know that it brings life to people. It brings hope to people. It brings love to people. And so that's why I can't stop talking about it. And that is why I'm pumped to tell y'all about one of our partners, Crew. Crew has missionaries in nearly every country in the world, and they're seeing Jesus make a difference in the lives of people everywhere. But lots of people don't have access to the Bible, and that's the reality that we're facing. Some of them aren't even allowed to have one. They can't just go to a bookstore like we can or have a Bible shipped to their door and just imagine what that would be like to never be able to read the Word of God or 
actually go to the Bible just to help you get through a day. I mean, I honestly can't imagine. I've been so grateful to have my Bible for so long. You know, I definitely want us to help where we can, and we actually can help. So for only $25 a month, you can provide three Bibles to people who need them each and every month. And when you do, Crew will get meals to 15 hungry people through their humanitarian aid ministry. Uh, So many of you out there have already signed up, and I just want to stop and say thank you for doing that. You're uh, helping the world in a huge way. Way. And also when you sign up to provide three Bibles with your $25 a month gift, you're going to receive a copy of my devotional book, Live on Purpose, just as a thank you. Live on Purpose is a daily devotional book actually helping you walk out in freedom the purpose that God has for your life. Crew uh, missionaries have said that they're having so much success with people reading their Bibles and connecting with God, but they still have people who need their own Bible in their own language. And I know that we can help out. I know you guys are capable. I know you guys have the heart for it. So all you have to do is text WO to 71326. Simply text WO, W-H-O-A to 71326 to help today. Just imagine how much this gift can truly change someone's life. You're going to feed their soul and their belly. So text WO to 71326 to help now or visit give.crew.org slash WO. Message and data rates may apply. Available to U.S. addresses only. And the funny thing is, the store, the person is from. So this is in the person that owns that store in Nashville is actually from Ruston, which is like twenty minutes from where we live, which is just so weird. Which is also weird. And that store is not even open anymore. They moved to Nashville and renamed it. Which I actually, if this person's listening to this who owns Haven, I do want that banner. If you are out there and you don't need that banner anymore, I'm gonna put that in her room. But it's just like the craziest thing. And again, like. Not every story is going to be like that. Like, my mom doesn't have that story with me. My mom just liked the name Sadie and looked up the meeting and it was Princess. And she was like, that's cool. You know, and and typically names are just like that. You know, you just think of a name and you just name your child that. And that's fine. That's beautiful. And no matter what, the story is so intentional that you have a baby growing inside of you that is going to come out into the world that has a whole personality and a purpose and a plan for their life that God has knit together and just formed beautifully and wonderfully with no flaws in them. Like that in and of itself is miraculous. So you don't need a crazy story. But I do love like, I love stuff like that. I love intentional things like that. I love um, meanings and all. Some some names, like I would actually maybe like the name, but if I didn't like the meaning, I'd be like, never mind, you know, or like yeah. I, I just really care about that. And so what I think is cool is that in May, I truly was like, God, like I really want to name this baby like what you have in mind for her. And I want it to be just as significant as Honey's name and just as intentional because you did so much in like the process of naming Honey that I don't want one day when I'm telling the story of Honey's name and then the next baby, I don't have any like intention behind what I named her or him. I was like, God, like I just, I want to be with you on that. And so I just think it's so cool that that day, like Haven of all names popped in my heart because like I said, I had never been on a baby name list for me. I didn't even care to do like two H's. I had so many other names that I had been thinking about and um, liked. And when, when I felt that, it just felt like, not even that that was like an option or suggestion. It felt like that's what it was. Mm-hmm. It was like, her name is Haven Bell. And it's she is like going to be a beautiful, safe place. Like almost like she's going to be a good friend to people, like a refuge that people can trust in. And it just felt like it was like just so clear. And so that's why I think it's so cool because I prayed that. And then seven months later, discover that God had been planning on her name being Haven Mm -hmm. since the first date me and Christian went on. And God had been planning on her name being Honey since the minute we read Proverbs 16, 24, is it? Mm -hmm. And uh, texted each other and I put a honeypot emoji by your name. And I just think that's so cool because, you know, if you, just like Christian said earlier, like I was in the movie and you're watching a movie, like what's cool about it is if you choose to see God in everything, you will see him in everything because he is in the details. It's like, uh, what does it say? Like all of creation, like what's the the verse? But like, 
all of creation kind of like points to that there's a God. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But but I think like even in that, it's like basically saying if you look around, everything mm-hmm. is pointing to the existence of God, right? And I think that was one of those moments for Christian and I that we were like, whoa. Like yeah. as if well, we know. didn't already know you were intentional. Yeah. Well, even with things like that, I feel like – you know, a lot of it's just about perspective. Like, you could look at that and be like, oh, my gosh, that's a weird coincidence, you know? Or you could think there's some bigger story to being like, no, we, I think that's intentional. You yeah. know, like that, that was actually designed and orchestrated. It wasn't just, you know, by chance or, or coincidence that that, that that happened. And we happened to get a picture at that spot and then did the pottery on the same day. Like, you know what I'm saying? For a lot of people be like, oh, it's just a weird coincidence. But for us... You know, we believe that that was actually intentional and thought out and and planned by God. Yeah. We believe that, you know, before the beginning of the earth, like God had us in mind, like that God was thinking about us and designing us with intention and purpose and a plan and um, everything just is for a reason, you know? And I think that living life with knowing like you have that kind of purpose and that kind of... um, love behind you just makes life so much better and so even for you listening like i hope that this story about honey and haven's day makes you as a person just feel like wildly loved and uh just that you have such a plan and that god thought about you Mm -hmm. so much further in time than than even your parents thought of you and and some of you might have felt like you're a mistake you know you might have felt like oh well my parents didn't even try to have me or my parents um had me out of um you know a a bad situation maybe it was adultery or out of wedlock or whatever but it it doesn't matter before they even thought about you god thought about you and Mm -hmm. decided that you had um, a place in this time in history that was worth you know him creating you and giving you all that you have in you to send you out for this time and so don't miss that you know um i just to me discovering that gave me a whole new idea of like how much God actually thinks of us, you yeah. know? And like, that's just, that's just crazy. Cause yeah. I'm like, God, you don't even have to think of us that much. You're God, but you do. Cause you're a good father, you know, it's just crazy. Yeah. And we just encourage y'all like, <clears throat> cause there really is so much intention that what God does, like be looking around and you know, not even specifically about baby names, mm-hmm. you know, but just look around at your surroundings and, you know, see what God could be speaking to you if you just take the time to look at your surroundings or, yeah. you know, take time to be intentional about things that are around you because God is wanting to speak to you in other ways other than just, you know, maybe through reading or worship or prayer, mm-hmm. like, you know, like like Sadie said, through creation, through um, little things that might seem like coincidences, but it might actually be God trying to get your attention through mm-hmm. things. So, And back to even what Christian said, like you can see it as, you know, just random chance that you can see it as God. I think one of the reasons that I know it is God is because I asked God that. Like, that yeah. was a conversation we had. So it was very personal to me. Like, when I saw a Haven behind us on the sign, I was like, God, you gave me that name. Like, I would have never named her Haven unless you told me to name her Haven in May. And if I didn't, like, ask God that, we would have named her something totally different, and that would have been fine. It would have been beautiful, but that haven sign behind us would have not meant anything, you know? Mm -hmm. But, like, I wanted to partner with God on what He had in mind, and I heard what He had in mind, and then God showed me and affirmed to me, like, hey, look, like, I've actually had this in mind for a long time. And so I think sometimes, like, you can miss out on the God things because you don't ask God what He wants or ask God, like, what are you doing in this? Or ask God to show you or reveal it to you, um, you know, what His plan is in this whole thing. And again, it's not always going to be as obvious as a banner behind you in the sky. Most things in our life are not that obvious. We are not walking around having a million stories like this. That's why this story is so significant, you know? Um, You know, if you're asking for a sign from God, a lot of times He's not going to give you a sign. Um, I mean, even in the New Testament, Jesus got so frustrated with people asking for signs. So I'm not saying, like, ask God for signs. I'm just saying, like, ask God to do life with you, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. God, I want to do life with you. I want to see my job today as an opportunity to see you in it, you know? I want to see this baby name as an opportunity to partner with you on creating um, this baby inside of me, you know? I want to see this relationship as partnering with you and what you have for my future marriage 
you know? And so when you do life like that, then you get to see God in all your relationships and all the things that you do. And it's just really, really powerful when you see what he ends up doing. But this this pregnancy has been um, awesome. It's been totally different than my one with honey. It's been the same in the sickness-wise. I was so sick this pregnancy. Whew. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was a while ago, but you were also super sick with honey, though. I know, but with honey, I threw up every every day from week 7 to week 24, which was bad. But it was mainly, like, in the morning and afternoon, then I'd find relief in the evening. But this one, I threw up every day from week 6 to 17 or 18, and then it was kind of, like, every other day till maybe week 20. But it was, like, never relief. Like, even, like, I would be, like, laying in bed and have to go throw up. That was, like, crazy. But I feel like just throughout this pregnancy, I've just been so much more chill than I was in my first pregnancy in the sense of, like, with Honey, I was, like, reading everything and trying to know everything. And, like, um, I just wanted to, like, know what to expect and what my plan was going to be for birth and what my plan was going to be for postpartum, what my plan was going to be for this. And with this one, I guess just because I've grown like confidence in knowing that God's going to do what God's plan is. I haven't been like so stressed about what my plan is. And I've said this with Honey's birth so much. And I really believe this for this one. Like with Honey's birth, I was such an over-preparer. I planned so much. Which is so funny because you're not like that. Yes, I am. I'm such an over-preparer. But yeah, but you're prepared, but you're not like a necessarily like a planner. I'm not a planner, but I over prepare for everything. Yeah, you prepare, like, but I you're study not like a so hard for yeah, everything I do. But I wouldn't say you're like a disciplined planner. No, but I would say I'm a super disciplined preparer and studier. Yeah. No, truly. No, you are. And I read everything and listen to mm. everything before I speak or before I do a podcast or before I whatever. And that is one thing you get annoyed with me by because I get so panicked by not being prepared and all this stuff so maybe preparing and planning is a little bit different but for preparation I was like so over like prepared in the sense that I had watched every video on a natural birth and every read every different thing on what this means and that means and whatever and I've said this so many times that every single thing I planned for did not happen but everything I prayed for did. And, you know, I've kind of taken that lesson with me into even parenting to be like, you know what, um, like I can plan all day long. I can prepare as much as possible. And there is a beauty to preparation. But at the end of the day, like, God, I actually just want what you have for me. And so birth plan this time, no plan. No plan. Trust God. No plan. Trust God. With wisdom. With wisdom. Talking yeah, to my doctor, yeah. whatever my doctor thinks is wise. Yeah. But I'm not stressing about like, am I going to do it natural? Am I going to have an embryo? Am I going to have a C-section? Like, what my doctor thinks is wise for my body, what we feel peace about doing, we're going to do. And yeah. I don't need to go read every single thing about a C-section or read every single thing about yeah. this. Because you know what? At the end of the day, like, honestly, that just makes me feel more afraid. And yeah. I would rather just walk in with peace knowing that like, and if you have God no idea what's going to happen. This intentional with the name of my child, God has been this intentional with the pregnancy that I've had, then God will be just as intentional with the way that she comes into the world. You do have one prep plan, though. What? Your one, I'm going to, I, I want you to think about it. There is one thing that you are pretty certain about that I'm getting an epidural? Getting, no, and? I'm getting induced? Yes, yeah, so you're getting induced. Yeah. I will get induced, yeah. which uh, that's controversial. Some of you out there are going to be like, don't get induced. But that's after anything. Honey's plan, you were dead set on not getting induced, which led to uh, potentially being a dangerous situation for the both of you. So what happened with Honey, obviously, like you guys know, um, we got in a dangerous situation because I was 41 weeks pregnant. Honey was really big. I ended up birthing Honey. She was nine pounds, five ounces. She got stuck. It was horrible. Uh, shoulder dyscocia is what it's called. They um, had to get her out a really hard way. She didn't breathe for two minutes and 10 seconds. It was very traumatic for everyone involved. But the amazing thing about the whole story is I was like dead set on having a natural birth. I was like, I will wait until this baby comes. But my doctor had been saying, yeah, Christian's laughing because I would literally listen to Wait on You by Mav City every day and be like, I will wait on you, God, I'll wait on you. And, and I kept thinking, I was like, I was like, I really like, obviously the song is incredible, right? 
And but I was like, is she maybe looking into this a little too much? Because you know, there comes a point where maybe something needs to happen. Yeah. Well, Christian was like, I think you need to get induced. My doctor was telling me to get induced. I was like, no, there's no reason. Like, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Well, finally, at 41 weeks, my doctor was like, you know, your body is not, it's not moving. You know, you haven't dilated. You're not faced. Like, you you need to get induced probably. Which is which is sad and funny. Because you had done almost everything. I had done literally everything I could like possibly bear do. Bear crawling in the house, like bouncing on the membrane them. sweeps. Yeah, every everything. Everything. And nothing was happening. So then I was like, okay, I'll get induced. Well, it was such a god thing I got induced and had the epidural because if I wouldn't have gotten induced and had the epidural, then um, literally it would have been a very, very dangerous situation for me and the baby um, and could have just been like the worst outcome for for me and baby. So praise God, uh, my plan did not go through. Praise God what I prayed for, that we'd have a healthy baby. Now it'd be healthy. It did happen. And so with this time, the the plan is to be induced. um, And, you know, we have it. We have a day. We're not going to say when that is, but we have a day that I'll be induced. And And that's still um, not for sure, but that's that's, that's the plan. But when I say, like, I don't have a plan, I'm saying I'm not tied to it in the sense of, like, I'm going to be so stubborn. Like, it has to be this day and it has to be this time and it has to look like this because ultimately, like, sometimes we don't know what's best for us. Like, your doctor does, you know, or or obviously the Holy Spirit does. And um, your husband, your people who are watching you, who are around you. So that's been cool. But I think like one thing that's really cool about this whole story, even just talking about the name of her and what I'm planning on doing for um, birth and everything is that, you know, when you begin to really see that God really does have a plan for your life and he has a plan um, for good for your life. And that doesn't mean everything is good. You know, we still had a hard labor. We still have hard things happen to us. We walked through a hard year last year with some just really hard things. God is still good. And when you realize that God's plan is good and it's intentional, when you have moments and glimpses of it, like the name drops and, uh, you know, the first two pictures and only two pictures we took on our first date, then it helps you to surrender your plan to him. It helps you to say, you know what? I'm actually human and you're God. Like, I saw I saw this from uh, this view. You're seeing it from heaven's view. And if you've ever, you know, gone on an airplane and you look down, it's a completely different view than you have on the ground, right? Like you're seeing it all. You're seeing the whole picture of the city. You're seeing the roads, how they're how they are. You're seeing the way that the rivers run. Like you see the whole plan. And so heaven's perspective is so different than our perspective. So to be able to say, God, actually, I would rather heaven's perspective than mine. Just as um, the heavens are higher than they are, so are your ways. And your thoughts for me, Lord. That that's what I actually want to be a part of. And so I'm just partnering with God on that. I mean, I'm partnering with God on the name. I'm partnering with God on the plan. Yeah. And I've just found that it is a much better yeah. way to live your life, partner with God yeah. and surrender to what He has yeah. for you. And at the end of the day, it's not <clears throat> it doesn't really necessarily make it, you know, easier in a sense because it still requires faith and trust. You know, yes. which which like we can say we don't have a plan, but this, it, but it's still hard to not want to take things oh, under you your know, control, under your control, and in, and in your own hands, and you know maybe not rely on him for those things because you know we're we're humans and we doubt and and, and all those different things. So I think even just having the faith and the trust to to believe that, um, you know, it's even still difficult. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, anything that requires faith is going to be hard because, um, you know, it it means that something's unknown. And so much of what makes us human, like, we want to know everything. We don't want to control everything. But the thing that makes God God is that He is in control of everything. And what makes us really in the right place as a human is to humble ourselves before Him and say, Mm -hmm. I'll give up my control. I'll give up my, um, you know, plan because I'd rather have yours. And I'm going to put my faith in you and my trust in you. And I'm not going to over, you know, stress about this. And I'm, I'm actually going to truly cast my cares upon you, Lord. Cast my burdens on you because I know that you care. Mm-hmm. Was that cast my anxieties on you, God? Like, I'm truly going to do that. It's one thing to say. It's another thing to do it. And I feel like with this pregnancy, I really have done that. Like, I don't, 
I feel like because of what happened last time in my labor, I have a lot of reasons to be afraid, but mm-hmm. I don't feel afraid. Like I don't feel afraid to go back into labor. I actually feel excited to. I don't feel like afraid of having two kids, even though I know that would be crazy. I feel excited. And it's not like a naive thing. I know it's still going to be hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, labor is hard and having two kids is hard. Postpartum is crazy. But I think like I've truly begun to cast my cares on him. And I think, you know, God's shown us so much up to this point. And even if he didn't show us a thing, he's done enough for us in our life by just literally sending his son down on the cross and be raised from the dead and invite us into that story that I can put my trust in that. I can put my faith in that. And I think that's the thing you have to know with God. Like, God, you can do these cool things. Like, you can show me the name and you can part the sea. You can do all these crazy, miraculous things. But at the end of the day, if you never do another thing, in my life that shows that you're a miracle working God. You've done enough to prove that you are, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think holding onto that in seasons where maybe you're looking for a miracle or you're wanting those signs to know that I trust that maybe you will show me that one day. But even if you don't, you've done enough to be worthy of being God, you know? Yeah, it's good. Well, it's just fun. It's supposed to be fun. Name dropped. Name dropped. Haven Bell Huff coming into the world in mm-hmm. May. Honey Huff and Haven Huff. They're going to be. Honey and they're, Haven. They're going to be a duo. Yeah. They're going to be slayers. Strong little safe place. They're going to be slayers. They're going to be powerhouses. They will be. Hopefully, best friends. Hopefully, best friends. I pray that like almost every day. Yep. I'm like, and God, one more thing. Can Honey and Haven be best friends? Good night, Amen. <laughs> Good night, Amen. Good night, Amen. Well, we love you guys. I hope that this encouraged you and inspired you. And, um, you know, I think if we could sum it all up to a message to take with you is to just partner with God in life. Partner with God with your faith. Partner with God with your trust. Partner with God in all things, whether it's a small thing uh, or whether it's a big thing. You know, mm-hmm. partnering with God on big life decisions or partnering with God with, hey, what should I do for dinner? You know, like it really doesn't matter how small or how big it is. You're going to start being amazed by God being God and the ordinary things in your life. And I'm so blessed by the times that he's shown up um, at the at the table, you know, and just blow my mind. And this was certainly something that blew my mind. So yeah. I love her name. I cannot wait to meet Haven. And it's going to be so, so much fun. So much fun. I love you guys. Love you guys.